Hey everybody, in this video, I wanna share with you the story about how I improved the sound of my saxophone literally overnight without even practicing. Impossible, you say. Well, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Now that I'm in this new studio you see here, uh, I need to get some acoustic treatment for the walls to improve the sound of the saxophone and my voice when I'm recording. Uh, but I didn't want to get the same gray, ugly foam that I have in my practice studio. So I was researching on the internet and I came across this uh, website, uh, GIK Acoustics, and I saw these pictures of these beautiful uh, wood panels that they make. And I said, well, that's gonna look great in the studio and why, why not go for it and put it in the practice room as well? Hey, welcome back to my practice room. Those of you who have watched some of my older videos on YouTube know that I used to film all my videos in this room, but maybe you weren't aware of how small it actually is. You see, I got all this horrible, ugly foam, this gray, ugly, nasty foam on the walls. It's done a pretty good job. Now I can play in here and it sounds okay. It's kind of dead. What, they, what these acoustic panels are gonna do is gonna absorb frequencies as well as diffuse frequencies. I put the panels up in the practice studio first. Uh, for this video, I made recordings over there. Um, first with the foam that was already on the walls, then I took down the foam and I recorded with the bare walls. And then finally I put the panels up and recorded with the panels on the walls. If you wanna hear the differences with the three different treatments, I recommend you uh, listen with headphones or using good speakers. <laughs> For me, in this room, it's kind of dead and, uh, and muddy sounding. I'm Luca, I work with JK. Uh, what I do is basically acoustic advice. I got on the phone with Luca from GIK Acoustics because I thought he'd be better at explaining the science of this than me. If you think about your room as an EQ that starts from 20 hertz and goes all the way up to 20 kilohertz, and you add foam, what you do is this. You basically dampen all the mids and highs and make the room sound very hollow and dark and dull and dead. I have no idea what's gonna change when I put the panels up. I don't know if it's gonna sound better. I hope it does. Let's find out together. <laughs> Okay, no more foam. It's like oppressively bright in this room as well. It's like a, a pitch. Because of the shape of the room, some frequencies are going to resonate with the room. To C. Our room is tuned to concert C. first thing that you'll notice is that you're going to have some reflections of the walls and those reflections will come back at you and hit your ears just a little bit after the original sound and those uh, basically will make you hear some frequencies less and other frequencies will be boosted. I didn't even practice in this room ever with the walls like this because it would have driven me completely insane. You can't even talk. With it is, uh, it's, it's, it's really, really annoying. The foam is outside. I hope these new things I got are gonna be better. Otherwise, well, I'll just have to put the foam back, I guess. And so basically what we try to do is, first of all, get rid of all those reflections, get rid of all those cancellations, get rid of reverb, but also to do, we need to do that in a very precise way, get rid of all that excessive sound that isn't part of the instrument that you're playing, it isn't part of the music that you're listening to, it's just what the room is doing and you don't want to hear that. So let's go ahead and put these panels up and see what it sounds like. It's all done. Uh, let me give you a quick tour. It, it'll be very quick because this room is tiny. This just comes on and off like a picture frame. 
So we've got three of these on this wall. These are the five centimeter thick impression panels. Over here, I've got the 10 centimeter thick impression panels. I've got two of them. I wanted to put a third one over here, but I've got my mirror. And then over on the far wall, I've got another 10 centimeter thick impression panel. And then over here, I've got two. On the ceiling, I've got one, two, three, four base traps that hang down a little bit, as you can see. This foam has left these horrible things on the wall, these lines where I pulled off the glue, and my walls are really nasty now. So if you're gonna get the foam, when you take it off, you're gonna have to repaint. It destroys your walls. So that's another reason to not get the foam. Because foam can't really deal with lower frequencies, especially thin foam stuff that is thinner than five centimeters, all those frequencies are still going to resonate and are still going to reverberate in the room. You can't hear the detail that is all above one kilohertz, that is really where details of each instrument come out. I did the recordings using the stereo microphone on my Zoom H5. Uh, I did this so that I could pick up more of the room sound. Normally when I mic the saxophone, it's much closer mic but for this, I put the mic uh, a couple feet away so you'd hear the saxophone, but you'd also hear the sound of the room. You'll see my Coles mic in the video as well. You're not hearing that one though. Uh, since it was close to the saxophone, it's not picking up enough of the room sound. Now let's compare the sound of the room with no treatment, with the foam on the walls, and then with the fancy acoustic panels on the walls. <laughs> Now there's no effects or post-processing on any of this audio. What you're hearing is the raw sound with the zoom set to the same input level and the saxophone at the same distance from the microphone. You'll notice that when I was recording with the foam on the walls, I was facing a different direction, but believe me, with the foam on the walls, it made almost zero difference no matter which direction I was facing in that room. Okay, so here are my final thoughts on the GIK Acoustics Impression Panels. They're amazing. Uh, it's transformed the sound of my room. I spend hours down here practicing, and I can safely say that this investment, these panels, have done more to improve my sound, at least what I'm hearing, hours at a time every day than anything else I could have spent money on. No mouthpiece, reed, saxophone, or gadget could have done as much as putting these panels up for how I hear myself. If you are getting a response, a positive sound response, when you play the saxophone, if what's coming into your ear sounds good to you, you're going to be a lot more motivated to play. Okay, so who are these for? Well, 
you can be a professional saxophone player and if you've got a practice studio, you want it to sound good. So uh, you're gonna be teaching lessons in there, you're gonna be practicing in there, you want the sound to be as good as possible. If you've got a music store selling musical instruments and you've got a room where the customers try out the instruments, man, you really need to have these. Also, look how much better they made this room look. Uh, the aesthetics, the visual aesthetics of stuff like this cannot be overstated. I don't mind taking a shot of this practice space now where you could see both walls and see how small it is because although it's small, it's not hideously ugly anymore. And you don't need to be a professional to have something like this in your practice space. If you're practicing on a regular basis, uh, if the saxophone is your hobby, it's your number one hobby, it's the thing you love to do in your free time, then I tell you right now, don't buy another saxophone. Get some of these acoustic panels and improve the sound of the saxophone you've already got. The room has so much to do with what your saxophone sounds like to your ears. You can buy all the gadgets and mouthpieces and expensive vintage saxophones you want. If the room you're playing them in is uh, has a terrible sound, they're not gonna sound their best. It's more pleasant to speak, it's more pleasant to play the saxophone, it's just more pleasant to have my eyes open in this room. What I noticed, what my ears noticed, was immediately when I would play any note on the saxophone, I would hear a much wider range of frequencies. In your case, we used quite a few diffusers, and that's why you're hearing the, the sound, especially in the mid-range and upper frequencies, that is so alive and so big, because it's not all being absorbed. Now, let me tell you something else. These were expensive. I paid for them myself. I asked to get them for free in exchange for making this video, and they said no. But in the description below, I'm gonna put a link to the GIK Acoustics website. They've got amazing tools for figuring out exactly what uh, size and shape panels you need to get for your room. They've got like this 3D uh, simulator where you put in the dimensions of your room and, and then you design it with the acoustic panels. That's what I did. It worked great. And I have to say their support is out of this world. So you definitely need some sort of acoustic treatment in your practice room. The foam is like a budget solution and it does function to some degree. But if you have the budget, I would invest in some proper acoustic panels. This is the way to go. In the future, if I move to another space, I can take these with me. Uh, if anybody wants like 20 square meters of foam, let me know. I don't know what to do with it right now. If you've got any recommendations for acoustic treatment, you could add them to the comment section below. If you like the way these panels look, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Share this with anyone you know who may be interested. If you're not already subscribed, get yourself subscribed. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.